Hello everyone. Through this video, we'll see how thread scheduling is done in Java. In our previous video, we have seen that whenever you are creating thread, the thread execution doesn't depend on the user. It depends on the availability of the processor. But in real time, whenever multiple threads will execute, we need to schedule after which thread which thread needs to be executed. So first of all, why thread scheduling is required? This is actually done by JVM to decide which thread should run currently. So there are a number of factors are actually related to this mechanism along with priority also that JVM will actually determine which task should execute next. So for that, number of methods are being used. So first method we'll see, for example, that sleep method is required for the thread scheduling. So let's see through the example. Thread scheduling in Java. So we are extending the thread class where I'll keep the run method. So integer index, let's keep a for loop, index equal to one, index less than equal to 10, index plus plus. We'll print the value. Okay, so inside that we'll define the main method. We created the host thread. created the second one and calling the start method to start the execution second method to start the execution of the second thread so let's execute Now, execution is done in any order, okay? But if I want to schedule that, after printing a single value of the first thread, my second thread to start the execution or start printing its value, okay? So what I'll do here, after printing a single value, I'll write down thread dot slip. So 400 is in millisecond, okay? But whenever, the normal flow of execution you are interrupting. You need to take the help of exception handling mechanism because there may be a chance that exception may be generated. Okay. So normally you have to write down the sleep statement within the try block and in catch block. You'll just print the type kind of exception. Okay. Now, what is the mechanism behind this? If OB1 will start its execution and it will call to its run method, one value, it will print index value. After that, it will be slipped. That means the 
control will move to the second thread. Now once second thread will print its first value, then sleep method will be called for OB2. It will be blocked. Then OB1 will get the chance. Okay. Okay. So first one is being printed. Then one for second thread. Then two for first thread. Two for second thread. So in this way, you can print the values. Now here we are not getting any meaning that which value is actually printing for which thread. Okay. So for that, if you want, you can print here. I can write thread dot current thread dot get id. Okay, so this is what the mechanism you can find the id of the thread. So whenever any thread is created, its unique id is assigned during its creation. You cannot change the id of the thread. Okay, so how you write down? Now once the run method will be called, I am taking the help of thread class. Inside that, current thread is one method is there. Then which particular thread is currently running, that ID I can print. So currently I may get the value that one for this thread, one for another thread. Okay, so let's check it. Now see, 14 and 13 two IDs are being given. Okay. So suppose OB2 is executing first, is getting the ID 14. OB2 is getting the ID 14. And here ID is 13. Maybe it is assigned. Okay. But if you want to confirm also, I can write on here system dot out dot print ln ID of OB1. Directly I can write OB1 dot get ID. Okay. Similarly, OB2 ID I can print. Okay. See. ID of OB1 is 13, whatever is assigned previously. Now ID of OB2 is 14. Now whenever the run method is being called, now I can know that one value is actually belongs to OB1, one value belongs to OB2. Clear? So now I am very much clear that which run method is currently being called for which thread. Okay? So the run method is called sequentially for OB1, then for OB2, then for OB1, then for OB2 sequentially because of sleep method okay so this is what the use of thread dot current thread dot get id whenever the run method will be called if you want to confirm for which thread the run method is being called you can use this method okay and if you want to confirm that actually what id is being assigned so by using that object you can call the get id method okay so like your uh, checking that the id of the method also you can check the name of the thread okay like id you can write name of ob1 name of ob2 but here instead of id you have to write get name okay so let's check so whenever any thread is created by default one name will be given by JVM. Okay. Check. Name of OB1 is thread 0. ID is 13. Name is 0. This is default value is being given. Name, name of OB2 is thread 1. Okay. So, but if you want, you can change the name also without any problem. So, check. 
ob1 dot set name okay so you can assign the value set name so suppose i am providing java then ob2 dot set name language name of obian after modification okay name of ob2 after modification let's check check name of ob1 is initially given the default value as 0 then i have modified it then now the name is coming as java and ob2 the name is given as 1 now after modification i am getting the value language okay so id i cannot change remember id we cannot change but the name we can change as per our convenience okay so get id get name set name sleep method all are used like thread dot current thread dot get id that is also used for thread scheduling okay now the next question comes that if i want that my ob1 means first thread will complete its execution then only my second thread should start execution okay now what i will do here once ob1 dot start i am writing i'll take the help of one method that is known as join method i'll write ob1 dot join okay similarly i am interrupting in the continuous flow of execution of jvm so I have to try down within try catch block. Okay. So I am starting the first thread, then calling the join method. So what is the meaning of join method? Let's see. Okay, so once thread OB1, OB1 will start means it will complete its execution, then only the second thread will start. So for any thread you are calling the, using the join method, its execution will be completed, then only it will be interrupted. Whether you are using sleep method or you are using any method, but the control will remain in the hand of the same thread for which you are calling the join method. Okay, after completion, then your second other thread will get a chance for execution okay suppose i am creating another thread whatever may be the id i am not worried about that for sure this is ob3 and i am writing here ob3 dot start okay now here, suppose I am increasing the value to 100, so that the suffering can be done, we can visualize. So I have, what I have done, okay, so name is same, let's change the name here. Okay, so I have called the join method for first thread, rest two threads are independent, they can execute in any manner. Okay, so I don't have any control. So check. Once the first thread is being created, its values are printing. Okay, and during the execution of the first thread, no interference is allowed. Done. So after completion of the first thread, then only the rest two threads will get a chance for execution. Okay, so you can visualize here that the values are being printing. So I've given the delay 400 milliseconds. So that's why you can see at least how the values are being printed by or how the thread execution can be done. Okay. So you can check this 
other threads are in the waiting state after completion now you can see the switching is done 14 15 15 15 so the switching has been done between the rest of the two threads okay now we don't have any control for second thread and third thread so their execution process is being suffered okay one after another but while you have seen i have called the join method for the first thread so till its execution is not completed no other thread is allowed to enter to the execution or to the run thread clear so you can see from the example now once it will be 100 both are completed okay so this is what the complete example regarding your thread scheduling clear so now you can visualize this one so join method is used to wait for a thread to die till it is not completed so currently running thread stops executing until the join thread completes its task obviously now get name set name we have seen get name is used to get the name of a thread set name we can assign or change the new name to a thread get id you can get the unique id of the thread which is assigned by jvm but you cannot change the id of the thread and current thread method is actually used to get the reference to the currently executed thread object so currently which thread is executing that id can be retrieved by using current thread method so thank you everyone for watching this